welcome to the next Shao tutorial here at Wudao and the last video of a three-part series with this song Wang Ning Mei, the vain longing that we've been going through. Okay, so I just played a small part. Uh, we won't go through the whole track because this will be the last one. So you should be able to play the full track by the time you figure out this last video. Okay, so with this one, what we're going to be going over, we went over before, we went over the double noting, and we went over the vibrato um, and a couple variations of those. This week, the last one we want to go through, which you're probably getting to anyway, but I want to kind of recap, go through it and give you some little tips to get it better, is the high notes, the higher octave. Okay, so in this song, in the next phrase where we left off uh, last week, I played that sentence first, and then the next part, you'll start seeing those notes. We've got some Do and Re, just two, coming in with the dot above the note. So you know that that's going to be in the high octave if you understand the notation, right? So the high octave is when we get back to this position, the first Do, Re, Mi, okay? So we're going to do Do and Re today. Uh, and we'll work forward in other songs, uh, getting into some of those other high notes. You won't use them as often. I'd say these two are really common because they're pretty much in the middle and they're a little easier to play. Um, but you will get some songs that will have really high notes. But if it gets too high, sometimes they just drop the, the, the tuning down to a lower scale so it's easier to play, depending on how you're doing it and what you're using to play. With the flute, okay, when we get to those high notes, especially with these first couple, we're not changing any of the finger patterns, okay? So the, the Do finger pattern is the same on, on the high scale as it is on the middle scale. So there's not really any changes there. That's pretty easy to understand. But what we need to kind of explain maybe a little more clearly is the breathing technique, okay? Because when we get up to these higher notes, of course, we're going to have not just a stronger pressure behind the breath, but also a thinner uh, surface area that you're blowing into. So one thing I like to think about is if you're going to think about the flute, you think about it like a jug, you're blowing into a jug, and the higher the note gets, the closer the breathing has to get. Like if you're whistling and you're blowing here to the low note, you need to get the air down the tube so it comes out of these lower areas, right? So you think about the rebound of those notes of that blowing. So the closer you get to the higher part of the, of the flute, the tighter the breathing has to be, okay? So an easy way to explain this that you can try by watching this video and kind of uh, do it by yourself is take your hand and basically what you want to do is tuck your thumb in, put your chin right on your hand as if you were going to use your hand as where the flu is with the same placement, okay? And make a very small, thin um, blowing with the lips and do it as if you're taking one of those little tiny coffee straws and you're blowing like like a whistle very very thin and very tight okay and the idea that you want to do with this is if you do that and you go i'm going to go a little bit farther with my hand you can be closer but even high up is okay when you blow downward you can feel the needle on the hair or on the back of your hand on towards the pinky like farther away so you have that and just barely grazing there and what you can do is by 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 frowning and by pulling the bottom lip in like a You can feel it coming in. You can see that you can feel the needle of the pressure going down and getting closer to to the mouth, where closer to the thumb side. So what you do is you kind of go, and you try to make that like a very thin kind of pressure, uh, like a needle uh, point. Okay, and that's kind of the idea of what you're doing with the breathing here. Is it's not necessarily just uh, more pressure, louder and harder. You can still do it soft, it's really about the accuracy of the breath and the control. So if you can get that straight down next to you, okay, that's going to be close to what a high note is going to be, okay, on the flute. So when we get to that, okay, high, high notes are going to be a lot easier to play if you're just playing hard, if you're just blowing as hard as you can. But what you want to be careful of is what they call liuchi, like, like spilling air, leaking air. So what you'll hear, sometimes you'll hear notes that sound like, And you can hear that wind on the outside of the note. So that's not really a full that, a note. That's an incomplete tone. It's not really clear. You know, it's not... You just hear a note. It's not... You hear the wind around it, okay? So you want to get that really tight. You want to get it thin and get it inside the, the notch, inside the cutout of the flute. 
Okay, whether you have this kind that's closed or whether you have an open kind, it'll be the same. This notch, you need to get it inside there. So really like a needle bone. So when you get to the high notes, you use that same thing. In the beginning, you can combine it with a little bit of pressure, a little bit of blowing a little bit harder to, to get the tone to come out clearly. But try to make it so you're not spilling any air. When you get to those high notes, if you start from soul and you can work your way up, through them steady. Again, you can take a metronome with that and kind of work through it and kind of get the high notes to a steady beat and a steady rhythm. In, in this song, in this track, you can see that sentence has got some half beats and some full beats, so you get a little bit of variety just by playing this song and the rhythm, um, but, but always take the high notes back and kind of practice them. That's like an easy trick you can think about to, as far as the accuracy. For the power, some of the things we do is we take like a little piece of uh, basic toilet paper, tissue paper, and you take a small like four by four centimeter square, put it against the wall and try to try to blow it against the wall and hold it there and then let go with your hand and walk farther away from the wall and walk, keeping the paper like against the wall in place. Um, and it'll work with tissue paper better than anything else. But that's another thing you can try to get the power to it. But typically the failing in the beginning isn't the power, it's the accuracy. So you wanna be more accurate before you're strong. Okay, so, so go over that, kind of think about this idea um, play this track. I'm going to put the full notation in the description below so you can play the whole song now. There's a little bit of a different part at the end that brings in some um, some high notes as well, but you should be able to hit that because all the notation now you understand in the track. And you can always head over to the main channel and see the, see the video of me performing the whole song if you want to hear a version of it. There's also a few other instruments that I'll link to. They have the guccine and the arhu and the singing, so you can hear the song play out a couple different ways. And then read along with the notation, always kind of listen to the song, look at the notation, get a feel for it, and then try to play section by section, play along. And then, yeah, from here we'll introduce a few more techniques, but it's about caught up with all the main notation, so we'll do some changing keys, we'll do some different things in the next couple tutorials, um, and we'll be able to learn full tracks each time, so that'll be a really nice change of pace. So. Um, keep practicing and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already if you're just seeing this video for the first time You can go back and watch the first two videos of this part and as well as the whole tutorial now We're getting a good chunk of material So I hope everything's coming together and you're starting to get like the full depth of what the show is capable of and you're starting to understand the notation that you can pair it with so keep practicing and above all just enjoy your flute guys because now you can play all the octaves you can play all the sounds